Father, we thank you for this morning. We ask you to lead us and speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. I am sharing about the parables of Jesus. And this morning, I want to continue um, on that subject. Hallelujah. Matthew 13. Uh, We spoke about the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the wheat and tares, and the parable of the leaven that was hidden in the Uh, meal. And today we want to move on and share about another important parable. Hallelujah. Are you there? Now, at the parable of the mustard seed, Jesus um, explained that these parables were great secrets. Amen. Amen. Matthew 13, verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. And then it goes on. Hallelujah. So, you see right there that he is, he is um, sharing that these parables are very important secrets that people would have wanted to have and to receive. So today we want to go on to another of those important parables and um, I believe that we are going to be blessed. Matthew chapter 13 verse 44. The parable of the hidden treasure. Hidden treasure. This is another parable of the kingdom of God. Now these are secrets. They are great truths. Although they look like elementary Sunday school teachings, they are actually great truths for the church. Amen. And I want you to Pretend or believe or uh, uh, not pretend but see yourself as someone who is being spoken to by almighty God with great, great important secrets and often great things are very simple. Did you know that? If you see a millionaire, real millionaire, you wouldn't even know that he's a millionaire. They don't show it. Rich people, real rich people, don't look rich. Often. When you see them walking around, you will never know who they really are and what they have. You can't really judge them by their car. There was a study and a survey done about millionaires in America, and they showed that most millionaires don't drive new cars. They don't buy expensive things. They don't live where the rich people live. You wouldn't even know. They say they call they say, call it the millionaire next door. You can't even see him that he's next to you in the same area, but he's the millionaire. So you realize that often we have a picture of what is rich or what is God or what is whatever. But what we need to understand and know is that sometimes the great things come in a very simple package. That is why Jesus was missed when he came. They didn't They they couldn't get him because he was too simple. He wasn't a pompous king as you would have expected the son of God to be. So this parable, it looks very simple and that is all I'm sharing with you this morning but it's a very, very great and important truth. It's a parable of the hidden treasure. Verse 44, Matthew 13. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Uh, The which... When a man hath found, 
he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. And verse 45 is a similar parable. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he has found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. But we are not talking about the parable of the pearl, because that's a different one. This is the parable of the treasure that is hidden in the field. Amen. Now, first of all, the first secret that you must know about this parable is that the kingdom of God is a treasure. Amen. And in other words, the kingdom of God is a treasure. It's a very valuable thing to have. To have God, to have his kingdom in your life is a great privilege and a great treasure. Hallelujah. It is not a burden. Some people see the work of God or the service to God as a kind of problem, a burden, some kind of sacrifice. God has asked me to stop drinking. He has asked me to stop smoking. He has asked me to stop stealing. He has asked me to stop fornicating. All the things that I enjoy doing, I'm being asked to stop. And I'm being controlled. And I'm in a prison. I'm in a trap. And I'm not free. You get it? That is not... Then you haven't found the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a treasure. Hallelujah. And he says it's a treasure that is hidden in a field. Now, that is one of the things about the kingdom, that it is a hidden treasure. You see, when you are dealing with the kingdom of God, people would always look mysterious to you because you will always wonder, what has this man seen that I haven't seen? What has he seen that I haven't seen? Why is he behaving this way that I am not behaving in that way? Why is this person, person prepared to die? When I am not prepared to die. Why is this person being prepared to give something when I am prepared to give nothing? Why is this person giving this amount of money when I'm, I can give more but I am not giving? I've been in this church many times. I've done fundraising. I've seen people who have little give more than those who could give. I've been raising funds since we were at the canteen. Amen. So I've seen many, many, many things. And I've seen people. So you ask yourself, what has this person seen that I have not seen? Why does this lady pay tithes and this brother doesn't pay tithes? Why does she pay tithes and I don't pay tithes? Why does she come for ministry meetings when I don't come for any meetings at all? I only come on Sundays. Why is she committed and I am not? I don't see why she behaves like that. Why is she always in church when I am not always in church? Because she has seen something that is hidden. That you cannot see because the kingdom has a lot of hidden things. It's not openly obvious to everyone. Because that is the nature of the kingdom. God is showing us that the kingdom and the things of the kingdom are often hidden. And it is a hidden treasure. And unless you are prepared to get it, you will never have it. Like the word of God. You will never have the word of God in you unless you search for it like a treasure. And unless you realize that the truths and the great blessings of this book uh, of the word are actually hidden things. Yeah. The greatest blessings of the word are hidden. Except you are ready to dig deep. You won't have the blessings of the word. Because the great blessings of the word are reserved for those who go deeper. Oh yes. You think you are benefiting from my preaching? I can tell you that those who go deeper and go into this word themselves, those who use concordances, those who use dictionaries, those who use uh, 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 tools that are available to study the word, they are the ones who find the real treasure. Not those who just listen in church on Sunday. There is treasure. There is treasure. There is great treasure. One of my greatest joys is when I find a new revelation. You know, yesterday I was just looking through some of my notes. Because I have so many different notes. And I was just looking through some of my notes. And I just saw a revelation that I had 
discovered some time ago. When I became happy, even now when I remember, I just feel happy. You know, I immediately felt like having a camp meeting. <laughs> and I just became happy. You know? And there is death, but, but I remember how I came by that revelation. You know, there is treasure in the word. Something, there's, there, there are great powerful treasures hidden in God and they are reserved for those who are prepared to find the things that are hidden. It's not just as it looks out on the, on the outward even like these parables that I'm sharing. You know, if I were to give you this parable to preach about, you would talk and in three minutes you would be finished. That's the reality. Yeah. But there are truths and there are hidden things that God has in store. And I'm telling you, God is telling us today that in his kingdom, many of the things are hidden and will remain hidden and he has decided to hide them. That's all. I say that's all. So that those who really want them will have them. In our Bible schools, the same thing. We used to feed the Bible students every um, day. And the Lord told me, don't feed them. He told me I was, I was doing my own thing. I shouldn't feed them anymore. I remember where I was when he told me I shouldn't feed them. And he said, if people don't really want to know God or to study his word, then they should drop out. Let them go through. And those who really want that treasure, you will see them at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. You will you see, you see them left on at the end of the day. And there are people who really want it. Because he says it's like a treasure that is hidden. And a man who for joy sells everything. We come to that part. He sells everything. He makes an effort. Which others may wonder, why are you selling your house? Why are you selling your car? What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Are you crazy? Ah, Maba, Olu, Oyeseke. What is wrong? Why are you doing what you are doing? We don't understand your moves. You've seen something others haven't seen. You are making a move others don't understand. And you can't make that move for people. You see, you can't uncover the hidden treasures for people. No matter what I preach, unless you yourself go into the word yourself, you will never have those treasures because they are, they are reserved. They are hidden for people who want them. And so the Lord told me, don't waste your money. He told me, I'm doing my own thing. My own idea. I should stop my own idea. I said, yes, sir, Lord, sir. Amen, sir. And that was it. Anybody who is not prepared to pay a price has not found the kingdom of heaven. Yes. You found something else, but not the kingdom of heaven. And that's the last point. That the kingdom of heaven is something that people sell everything for. It's, it's, I mean, if you've really found the kingdom, you'll be prepared to pay a very high price. Notice, as we read it, Matthew 13, verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, which when a man has found, he hideth. Hmm. He hideth because it's so precious. And for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Now, when it comes to the kingdom, anyone who is not prepared to give up everything, you are not worthy. You haven't found the kingdom. You are not worthy of the kingdom. Let me say salvation. Your salvation is worth you giving up your boyfriend. If you don't know, I'm telling you, it's worth you giving up your boyfriend that you can go to heaven. It's worth, I mean, think about a boyfriend in heaven. Almost every boyfriend will disappoint you at a point. It's just a standard 
that procedure. It's just a matter of time. It's worth giving up the boyfriend. So if you haven't gotten to the point where you are ready to give, in, to give up the boyfriend, you haven't seen the kingdom. You haven't seen the kingdom. But the kingdom, the way it is, if you've really seen the kingdom, it's worth giving up your boyfriend. It's worth giving up your girlfriend. It's worth giving up anything. Otherwise, you haven't seen it. So when you see somebody giving up this, give, I remember one day we had a church service, Reverend Saki preached, and afterwards a young lady came and she was crying and crying and crying and crying. And I was like, what is this? Why, why is this lady crying? So her, she, she was leaving her boyfriend uh, from the preaching. The preaching was so powerful and she was so moved and she was crying. She was leaving her boyfriend. And I watched as she left her boyfriend. Because she had seen the kingdom. She cried her way out of it, but she did, she did do it. She cried all the way and then she, she, she went ahead with it. She left him for the kingdom and she, she entered the kingdom at that point. It's worth it. If you don't know, it's worth it. It's worth living your, your, your bad lifestyle, your stealing and your crooked ways. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth living your fetish. It's worth living every other religion. It's worth living anything. Otherwise, it's not like, I mean, think about it, heaven. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Come on now. It's worth living politics. It's worth living NBC. I've seen people, it's worth living NPP. I've seen people who give up their soul because of politics. One brother told me, you know, when we were under attack, he said to me, Bishop, and this was a member of a charismatic member of a charismatic church. In fact, he was, I once went to preach at that church and I, he was there at a leaders' meeting. And as the thing was getting hotter, he was having to decide between the church and the people who were attacking us. And he told me at a point, he said, Bishop, I must tell you something. The way the, way the thing is going, I want you to know that when it reaches a certain place, you see, it's my job that is at stake, daily bread. And when it reaches that stage, then he didn't continue. But when he got to that stage, he forsook us. He forsook the kingdom. And he went away and helped to fight us. So when our walls were broken, I met his pastor and I told his pastor, you see that brother? His name begins with something. I said, you see that brother? Tell him that I said thank you. On behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ, I said thank you for helping to attack the church. That's all. And, and the pastor said, I will not send that message. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth losing out. What? How can you compare NBC with Christ? How can you compare NPP with Christ? I mean, look at these politicians. The people you see on TV today, it's just a matter of time. There will be, there will be non-entities in this same Ghana. Flies and mosquitoes will be biting them. <laughs> How can you give up Christ and the kingdom? They haven't found the kingdom. Maybe that is it. So, so maybe it's, it's to tell us that maybe people haven't really found the kingdom. Maybe they have joined the church or somebody haven't really found the kingdom. The kingdom, the way it is, you are ready to give up. He says he selleth all. He selleth all. He selleth all that he has. He's ready to give up everything. Every pleasure, every, everything, every person, anything. Jesus said, if your eye offend thee, pluck it out and throw it away from thee. Throw it away. It's part of you. He said, if any man come unto me and hate not his father and his mother, his brothers and his sisters, his wife and his children, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. There's a kingdom. We are talking about the kingdom. We are not talking about a party or something that is, is, is up there. We are talking about something that, that is so great and so powerful that if really you found it, everything in your life that you have to sell, you will sell. There is nothing that will be left. Amen. Nothing at all. Not a, not a one. Otherwise, it's not the kingdom. To serve God in the ministry, to be a pastor, there is nothing that will hold you back. You will sell all. You sell your name. You sell your reputation. You sell your privacy. 
You sell your private life. You sell your selfish life. Because you found the kingdom. You give it up. To be a minister. You, to, to be, to be full, if you've really found it, to be full time in the ministry. To be a full time pastor. Or to serve God from morning till evening. In the, whatever capacity you are able to. That when you wake up in the morning till you lay your head to rest. It's just serving God. If you were to ever find that thing. You will leave everything. And I mean every possible thing you can ever have. Just to have that. If really you found the kingdom. Nobody will even discuss it with you for a moment. Because you know that it's the most valuable thing. I was just in Takrad and I was with my father-in-law. 80 something years old. And then just as we were going and he, he, was, he was praying. Then he made a comment. He said something. I think he was praying. He said we should pray. And as he prayed, he said, he said, he said, he said something, you know, and, and the way he was, he was honoring me. You know, he always, and I feel nervous when he, he's, he's, he behaves like that because he's so elderly and so grown up and experienced in life. But then he said something, he said, you see, but they are, they are above us, even though we are whatever, they are above us. And I, I forget the exact words, but it was like a very wise man can see that although I may be a businessman I may be this, I may be this a person who has given his life to serve the Lord and whatever, at the end of the day especially when you get into heaven you see that those who have given themselves to, the, to God and to serve it, they'll be about, you're a businessman or whatever you just be you, you, you just be uh, what do you call it? down there yeah he, he, he said it, he said it in his prayer. He knows, he's very conscious of eternity because he knows that, it's, he said it three. It's, 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 the next major event is not his wedding, it is going home. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they are, whatever, they are, they are over us, they are above, they are higher than us. And it was almost like an eternal thing that he could see that, yeah, you may have acquired buildings and built this and had this and done this and this and this and that on earth. But somebody who has found this great treasure and has sold all, he has found something more than what you have found in your life. If you've really found it, you will sell everything. So you, may, you may look at me and you wonder, what, 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 what have I seen that I'm doing what I'm doing? What have I seen? What have I seen? Why? Why? I have seen something that's hidden. And you will never see it until you search for it. God wants searches. God wants people who really want it. Never give your gift, your precious thing to someone who doesn't really want it. He will insult you with it. He will look at it and say, what is this? Never give your dress to somebody who doesn't like your dresses. Because the person says, look at this old dress that you give. You can't wear it now. You're giving it to me. That's true. Look at the hole here. That's what, you know, the hole is nothing. You could have just sold it. So don't give it because somebody may not appreciate that hole. Don't give your car to somebody who may, he may tell you you're giving him a lot of problems, financial problems. But the carburetor was poor. You knew the carburetor was poor. You knew the engine was weak. You knew that it chops oil. You knew this, you knew this, you knew this. And you gave the car to him. It would be better to be. That is why America, they burn a lot of their wheat. They burn a lot of their food. They just burn it. There's nobody to eat it. If you found it, you sell all to get it, to hold it. To have it. That's why I'm a pastor. That's why I, left. I left medicine. I could be living in England. I could be living in Switzerland. I could be living in America. I could be living in New York. My classmates are living there. Those are, why? What, are, what I have found cannot be compared to money. Those who are in the full time ministry, genuinely, for full time ministry, most of them have, have, have more to gain, financially speaking, outside. Far more. One day, one of my classmates wrote, uh, he sent his, uh, what do you call it, you know, salary, whatever. And I was just looking at it, so it was just wonderful to me. But it does not attract me. You can put a million dollars down on me, I'll just, I'll play chascale with it. Oh, yeah. Somebody may not be, are you sure? <laughs> you haven't seen what I've seen. That is why you think the way you see. If you've seen what I've seen, the way my eyes are set on something, Look, my aim is, you see, I'm trying to get to heaven. I'm trying to make it. When I get there, it's like I'll not be a small boy in heaven. That's one of my aims. <laughs> These days, 
I found certain things in the Bible, you know, like who will be the greatest in heaven. Yeah. This, I'm, trying, I'm trying to analyze. These are questions that have been asked already. Who will be the greatest? When we get to heaven, who will be the greatest? What is the most important in command? I found that one too. That all these things were answered by Jesus. Who will be the most important in heaven? Who will be, what is the most important instruction to obey? All these things Jesus answered. I'm really, I mean, my aim is clear. Jesus said, lay not up for yourself treasures on earth. I am intentionally trying not to lay up treasures on earth. Because I, 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 at a point the treasures are coming. Now, some people don't understand. But you know what you've seen. Why are you selling that house? What? You are resigning from Echo Bank. Because no one knows that you've got a, you've got a better job at Barclays. <laughs> you know what you've seen. So, why are you resigning from Echo Bank? Hey, we have this for you. This, 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 this. You've got a better job at Barclays. Nobody can understand why. Why are you leaving? You are leaving Echo Bank. You are leaving Echo Bank. You know, but you, you've, got, you've already signed your agreement with Barclays Bank. Big job, big money. So nobody can understand what you are doing. But you have seen what you have seen. Higher pay, more benefits. You should see the doctors in America as they work. Why do you go to work in the morning, the evening, the morning, the evening, the afternoon, the evening, the morning, the evening? And then they're like slaves. They know what they've seen. Why do you go there to suffer? You know what they've seen? They have seen something. I also have seen something. That has also made me leave everything that I have. I can leave and I'm following it. And anyone who really finds the kingdom, you will leave everything. No man will be able to keep you. You will allow your heart to break and mend again. You mend your heart. You say, my heart is broken. I've loved this, I've loved this boy. You allow it to break. Let it break. After when it breaks, you can weld it again. You'll allow your heart to break. You'll allow your heart to break. You'll allow yourself to lose because you know you are going to gain. Because you've seen the great treasure in heaven. How does the kingdom? If it's the kingdom, that television, you will leave it behind. What is TV? If it's the kingdom, you will pay. You will go for it. It's worth it. I thank God. Sisters and brothers, I thank God. Many of you cannot travel. I can. I can. I can go anywhere I want to go. I have not, not yet been refused a visa anywhere. I can. Many of you cannot. I can. But I'm not going. I'm here. Unless something else drives me out of here. Something like the Lord. I'm preaching. Many of you don't have good jobs. I've got a good job. I'm on leave. I work at Kolibu. I'm on leave. Live without pay. <laughs> and apart from that, I can go and I can still have other jobs elsewhere. Or I can reapply. I have a choice. What have you seen? And then people start to accuse you. Oh, that's you are enjoying a lot of things. I mean, as a pastor, we have been seeing you moving around, and we know that's a he said, I mean, this benefit is inside the, the this I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Your mind is low, yeah. crass, secular. Your vision is different. What you see is different from what I see. I need you to be there because the Lord will prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You will by all means be in my life always. I can't live without you, but I will still be eating in the presence of the Lord, and I know what I have seen. I'm glad I found the treasure. I love the treasure. My treasure is more, is greater than my wife. At first, I, th- I thought, you know, I would love my wife more than I would love the Lord. I love my, my, my Lord more than I love my wife. Any day. My wife is a companion for my life. I love the Lord far more than I love my wife. Oh yeah, well, I mean, you can't compare my wife with, my, with the Lord. Ask me to choose my wife and the Lord. I'll choose the Lord. I don't understand what you are saying. You, you, you can't easily understand it. <laughs> Any 
anything you love more than you love the Lord? Should not be there. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. The first commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord. The second is to love your neighbor. And your first neighbor is your wife or your husband. That's your first neighbor. And then your cat and your dog and other things that you have. <laughs> Stand up. 